Okay, so we have another one. We want to find the value, exact value, and the reference angle. So this time we have a secant. We have another negative angle. So again, if you have a negative angle, you want to keep adding 360 until it becomes positive. And once it's positive angle, then you can stop adding the 360. So first, we're going to take negative 510, and we're going to add to it 360. So if we add 360 once, it's still going to be a negative angle. Uh, so we have to add one more 360. So then if we add one more 360, it does become uh, positive. So when we add that all together, you get positive 210 degrees. So what that's saying is that secant of negative 510 is exactly the same thing as secant 210. We're using the periodic property that says that we're going to arrive at the same exact spot on the unit circle because all we're doing is going around and around and around and we're going to end up at the same spot. So now the problem becomes secant 210 and this is what we're going to work with now for the rest of the problem. We want to get it out of the negative angle and turn it into a positive angle. First thing we want to do is find the reference angle for 210 degrees. So I'm going to draw, uh, draw this out in standard position. So that's going to be between 180 and 270. It's going to be a little bit closer to 180. So in standard position, 210 degrees would look like that. It ends up in the third quadrant. So when I do my reference angle formula, my reference angle formula is in the third quadrant is theta minus 180. So my theta is 210 degrees, and we're going to subtract uh, 180. So reference angle is going to be equal to 30 degrees. Okay, so 30 degrees will be uh, the reference angle. Now, if I want to find the value, I have a three-step process I have to do in order to get to that. The first step would be to find the reference angle. The second step would be to apply the trig function to the reference angle. The trig function here is secant. So I want to do secant 30 degrees. Okay. Now if you have a table that does not have secant on it or you're working with a unit circle, we need to have a cosine there instead of a secant so we can get the exact value. So I want to change the secant and I'm going to use an identity for that. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So that means that secant 30 is the same thing as cosine 30. So now we can get the value from the unit circle for cosine 30. That's going to be square root of 3 over 2. So we're going to put square root of 3 over 2 on the bottom. That's cosine 30. Uh, this is going to uh, end up flipping this. We take the top fraction and multiply it by the reciprocal of the bottom when we divide. And that's going to give us 2 over square root of 3. But we want to do one more step. We want to rationalize this. So I'll multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3. And we get 2 square root of 3 over 3. And that's the exact value for step 2. Now the last step is we have to apply the appropriate sign depending on what quadrant that we're in. We're in the third quadrant, so we have all students take. Take represents, uh, the T represents tangent. Tangent would be positive, but everything else is going to be uh, negative. So what else is negative there is going to be cosine. Uh, so cosine is going to be ne uh, negative, but also secant is going to be negative too because cosine is the reciprocal of the secant, which means they both have the same sign. So if cosine is negative, then secant is also going to be negative. So uh, for step three, if we want to find the exact value for secant negative 510 degrees, we have to put a negative sign with our value here. So I have negative 2 square root of 3 over 3, and that is going to be our second answer. Our first answer that we have, the reference, that will be the second blank on the, on the test. We'll fill that in with 30 degrees. The first blank would be negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. So again, a reminder, if it says exact value, you don't want decimals. You want the exact fraction, including the square roots.